A couple of years ago, I worked on my Powermatic 180 planer. And I sort of figured I would get a cheap, old, straight knife head to practice changing out the cutter head on this planer before I go and splurge on a carbide insert head for it. I found that I don't get anything done unless I have a deadline. And I'd been wanting to get a new cutter head for my planer, but I hadn't gotten around to it. Then Global Tooling contacted me about getting me one of their new Lux 3 cutter head that's similar to the Shelix cutter head. And this was just the thing I needed to work on my planer again. <laughs> so they're sending me this new cutter head free of charge, but they're not paying me any money. One of the things that intrigued me about working with Global Tools was that they're somewhat local to me. They're in Springfield, Oregon, about three hours away by car. And I unpacked it. It looked like it was in good shape. What I was thinking at this point is maybe I would leave the plastic on for now and try and get the cutter head put in with the plastic on so I would have something to protect the teeth and my hands while I put the planer head in. I wanted to do a couple of tests of the old cutter head and the new cutter head. So I ran a piece of pine and a piece of oak through the planer as I had it set up now with the straight knives on the cutter head. Did some sound checks on those planes, about 86, 87 decibels. And I labeled those pieces. So I have a test side that's my Shelix joiner head and a side that's the planer straight knife cutter head. Now I can start taking the planer apart enough so that I can get the old cutter head out and put the new cutter head in. I started with the big stuff on the outside, like the dust collection hood. And there was a little piece of wood sitting inside on the pressure bar. Took the sharpening bar, sharpening sled, or whatever this is called, off, which I shouldn't need anymore. And I cleaned the sawdust out of the planer as much as I could. Then the drive belt cover can come off. And I can get the belts off. So there's a trick where I can lift the motor by squeezing the belts. Then tighten the bolts holding the motor on back up again. And then the, the belts are loose so I can get the belts off. I can take the indexing pin out. This is the pin that holds the cutter head in the location so the blades can be sharpened in place. I shouldn't need this anymore, although it will be going back on again. Then I decided to take the blades out of the cutter head, which will make it a little bit easier to take the cutter head out of the machine. It's just a matter of loosening the bolts that hold the blades in and pulling the blade assembly out and the adjustment pins for the blades can come out. I can take the drive pulley off. I think this set screw does not need to be loosened. There's just one set screw in the pulley. I'm hoping, because I just did this a few years ago, that the parts come apart fairly easily. It's not like they've been seized together for 60 years. <laughs> I took the chip breaker off. Now I can take the pressure bar off. It has two adjustment screws on each side, which are also holding the bar in the right location. So I can take those out and rotate the whole assembly and I can get to the four bolts that are holding the pressure bar in place. I was laying out the pieces on the table saw next to the planer. 
Now the drive side and the parts near the cutter head are off. I can take the belt cover off the non-drive side and get at all of the belts and gears and pulleys that need to come off to get at the cutter head. <laughs> So there's a handle that engages the rollers. That comes off with a set screw. Then the wheel that adjusts the speed of the planer, or the speed of the rollers, I guess. So the speed that the wood goes through the planer. That whole system can move and allows you to loosen up the belt on the outer part of the system here. And you can get that belt off. Then the pulley for that belt comes off and the gear to the two rollers. The gear on the infeed side came right off, but the gear on the outfeed was a little tighter and I had to get the gear puller out, which puzzled me a little bit because I had just taken this off not too long ago, but it was still tight. I did let it soak with penetrating oil overnight. I got the belt off the pulley from the cutter head. And this little pulley at the end of the cutter head, which is the last thing to remove, was also hard to get off, and I had to get the pullers out. I soaked it with penetrating oil, but it really shouldn't be seized, so I don't know that the penetrating oil is really doing that much. And I got the bigger pullers out. I need to jerry-rig a puller to make it a pusher. So I'm going to attach this to the outside of the planer and I can use one of the bolt holes to bolt it in place. Then there's another bolt hole that I can put a longer bolt through and it has threads in the hole, but I couldn't find a bolt that would fit those threads. So I used a long bolt and sandwiched the puller on that bolt. Now I can carefully drive the cutter head out. So it's not pressed into the bearing housings, but they're in there tighter than I can pull on the cutter head. So I need a little bit of help from the puller. So on the drive side, the bearing housing comes out of the frame of the planer. Once I get the cutter head over onto the table, and it is quite heavy as it's a solid piece of steel, <laughs> I can pull that bearing housing off and it just came right off. But it fits around the bearing perfectly. Then I got back to the new cutter head and I had thought I would put the new cutter head in with the plastic wrapped around the teeth so the teeth would be protected and I could hold the cutter head without cutting my hand. And I got the cutter head through the frame just fine, but I found that I couldn't get the sleeves that hold the chip raker and the pressure bar around the cutter head. So back to the work table, and I thought I was gonna to have to take all the little teeth off to put the cutter head in. I knew when I was taking these off that they've redesigned the way that you put the cutters back in again so that they seat a little bit easier and fall into the exact location so that you don't get little ridges on your surface. So I took the plastic off and I started to take the teeth off. As I was thinking about it, I was wondering if it was just the plastic that was in the way. And if I was very careful, maybe I could get the cutter head in with the teeth in place. I knew that I had gotten the original quiet head out with the teeth in place. So the radius of the teeth must fit through those sleeves. So I very carefully put the new cutter head in and very carefully put the sleeves around the teeth. And it worked. The quality of this Lux 3 cutter head is very nice. It's cool seeing the pristine tooling next to the old machinery. So the cutter head is in and I can put the pulley on the end. There's a little plate that goes over the pulley and maybe you can see the big mistake I'm making right now. <laughs> I started to put the gears back on. Many of the keys were again pitted, I guess, <laughs> from the set screws. 
I was wondering if that's what was making them tight. This may not be the case, but I sanded down that little bit of damage from the set screws just to make the keys a little flatter. Put the key back in the gear. This is the gear that was hard to get off. And this is backwards. So I'm guessing it's going to be hard to get back on again. And it was. So with a little help from the mallet, I was able to get that gear back on. I got the axle all the way through, but I couldn't get the gear on any further with the mallet because the mallet's now hitting the end of the axle. Took a piece of wood and drilled a hole in it. I was hoping I could tap around the axle and get the gear on a little bit further, but this didn't work. I'm wondering if I never got the, the hole that I drilled centered. I really should have drilled the hole all the way through the piece of wood so I could see what I was doing. So now we can see the, the big mistake I made. I had to pull the two gears off and loosen up the, the bar at the end to get the belt on the pulley I had put on because the belt didn't fit. <laughs> I had to back up a few steps to get this belt on. The gear on the infeed roller slid right on. Then the pulley and the gear that drives the two bigger gears. And that took a little work getting on, but luckily there's a spot you can hold on to and kind of shake the gear into, or shake the pulley into place. Then the handle clutch mechanism that slid on. Two set screws to get that in place. And a belt. Then on the drive side, I can put the indexing pin back on again, which I shouldn't need anymore as I'm not going to be sharpening this. So it's sort of a big complicated washer at this point for the two bolts that are holding the bearing housing in that go through the plate that's holding the indexing pin. <laughs> and I can put the drive pulley on and I had written down seven eighths of an inch that the, the depth of that hole is. So I got that in pretty close to the right place. And it seems to turn without hitting anything. I can put the pressure bar back on again. Bait goes down. I can put it on quickly now and, and I will need to adjust it later. I can put the chip breaker back in. This goes in easily, but it has to be in exactly the right place. There's the four bolts, but there's also a pin at each end that has to be lined up. So this falls in the exact location. Bait goes down. That can be rotated into place. And the adjustment screws just rest on the infeed roller. I can put the drive belts back on again. I have the motor bolted up a little bit, so the belts are a little bit loose. And once the belts are on, I can loosen the motor bolts and lower the motor and tighten up the belts and then re-tighten up the motor bolts. Now the moment of truth. See if the cutter head's gonna go flying across the shop or stay in place. And it's perfect. <laughs> I realized at this point, I wish I had taken some kind of vibration reading before I changed the cutter head out. So I could see if it's vibrating more or less. It seems fine. It just would have been interesting to have gotten a number. I did find one bolt when I had everything together and I was in a panic that I was going to have to take a bunch of stuff apart. But it turned out it was the bolt in the hole that I used for the long bolt to clamp that puller onto the machine. And I was able to get at that with everything in place. So it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> Something I didn't do the last time I changed the cutter head out was to really try and tune all of the other elements in the planer besides the cutter head, the, the chip breaker, the pressure bar, and the two rollers. So the first thing I did was to try and figure out if the table was parallel to the cutter head. And it's a little tricky because this isn't a straight knife cutter head. So what do you measure against as far as where the blades are? So I decided the teeth that are at each end of the cutter head are parallel. I'm not sure if this is true, but it, it seemed like it was true. 
I wanted it to be true. <laughs> so I measured against those to check the parallelness of the table. And it seemed like the drive side was a little bit low. So there are two adjustment collars, one on each side, that attach to the threaded rods that move the table up and down. I can adjust those and adjust the angle of the table. And I got it to where it seemed like it was parallel. Once the table's parallel, I can adjust all of the parts of the planer that need to work with the cutter head. So I checked the infeed roller, and it seemed like it was slightly off now, too. So you can adjust that from underneath. There's a set of bolts that, that adjust that. Then from the top, I can adjust the chip breaker. And there are two adjustment bolts on either side of the chip breaker that rest on the infeed roller. Then I did the outfeed roller the same way I did the infeed roller. The two rollers and the chip breaker need to be roughly 32nd of an inch lower than the cutter head. The pressure bar, which holds the, the workpiece down after it's come through the cutter head, has to be very close to the cutting arc of the cutter head. I've seen eight one thousandths, three one thousandths, and a, a video that talked about one one thousandths of an inch above the arc of the cutter head. So I got that as close to that as I could. And I ran the first piece of wood through the planer. And it felt like the cutter head was doing its job, but the rollers and the chip breaker and especially the pressure bar were too high. It wasn't really catching the piece and it kind of wouldn't move the piece along. And I got a ton of snipe at the end. So what I was beginning to think was that there was sort of the, the scientific way to do this where you really try and measure and figure out exactly the dimensions that everything needs to be. And then there's the more artful way where you, you run a piece through and then you just start adjusting things. And if it gets better, you do more of that. <laughs> I lowered the infeed roller, outfeed roller, and the pressure bar. The other thing I was thinking about was that I could run a thicker piece through. Then from that piece of stock, I know that its thickness is the distance the arc of the cutter head is from the table. And I can then use that piece as a gauge to figure out all the other parts. And what I learned from that was that the infeed roller was still a little too high, as well as the outfeed roller, and I lowered the pressure bar. Then it worked a lot better. Then what I did is I kept lowering the pressure bar about a quarter turn on each pass, and it kept getting better and better, till it finally got to where it seemed like the planer was doing what it was supposed to be doing. And I can grease the grease ports and put the cover back on. I can put the dust collection back on. It's kind of nice that I don't have to put the sharpening bar back on. It'll be a much cleaner look on the top of the planer. Not that that was ever really in the way. I had a piece of cherry that I ran through a couple of times just to see what the surface would be like. And it was giving me a really nice surface, <laughs> really smooth, better than my joiner with the Shelix head, which I haven't rotated the inserts for quite a while. I'm getting a lot of grooves in that because I think I've nicked a lot of the inserts. That's not really the best comparison. So I did a test of the oak. The new Lux 3 cutter head is slightly quieter. But I think what's nicer about it is that the sound is more pleasant. It's more of a continuous hum instead of a more choppy sound of the straight knife cutter head. One thing I had been wondering about was whether I could go thinner with this cutter head. 
had a piece of pine that I ran through over and over again, getting it thinner and thinner and thinner. And I got it up to where the planer wouldn't let me raise the table any higher, which is about an eighth of an inch. And I know I've tried to do thin things in the past and it hasn't worked very well. So it's really nice that I can now do much thinner stock with this plane, with the way the planer is set up with this cutter head. This is the joiner with the Shelix head on it. This is the pine with the new cutter head. I do have tiny, tiny little chip outs. The piece feels and looks very smooth when you look at it. This is the planer with the old straight knifed head. I hadn't sharpened it in a while and it does have a few grooves in it. And you can see a subtle washboarding effect on the surface. This is the piece of oak with the old cutter head and the new cutter head. The surface from the new cutter head definitely feels a lot smoother. Now that I have the machine all dialed in, the surface on the planed boards is really nice. It's much better than the straight knife head that I had. And it's on par or better than my Shelix head in my joiner. Overall, I'm really happy with this new Lux 3 cutter head. It leaves a really nice surface and the sound is a little better. And I'll be able to plane really thin pieces of material. That's getting me really excited. I'll put a link here at the end about acquiring the planer and changing the cutter head the first time. Thanks for watching.